Hello friends, today I will try to explain you all the major issues because of which your new build computer may not turn on. On the chipset Z490. I use motherboard Gigabyte Hours Ultra Z490. It is in working condition and doesn't have any issue. But I will try to explain you everything and also show in this video. For example, you just built your computer and found out the problem that your computer doesn't show any response when you press your power button. First, what you need to do is unplug all side devices like mouse, Wi-Fi, keyboard, USB and other you may have. We had a similar problem when our PC won't start because of faulty keyboard. If after this your computer still doesn't turn on, then we need to open the back panel and searching for the cable that were connected to the motherboard. Once you open that panel, you will find a bunch of wires. We will need exactly the power SW and reset SW. This is our motherboard and we would looking for this socket. On old motherboard pin in socket could be different, but on almost all of the motherboard from 2017 they could be pretty the same. All new motherboards were built by the same scheme. We were looking for those two pins. It's named Powered Switch. On our wires is marked as Power SW. This Power SW we need to switch into third and fourth pin. So we take Power SW and switch it to the third and fourth pin. Then we take reset wire and switch it exactly under the power SW. Into the second row where the third and fourth pin. Like this. The other cable we wouldn't need it. And trying to start the PC again. If it still wouldn't start, then the take motherboard of your computer. When you remove your motherboard from the computer, you would need to put all the necessary hardware onto the motherboard. Follow the video to do it.
Here I have processor core i7 10th generation 10700K. Check the marks on your processor and put it straight to the nest. Temporary replace the color in. Adding thermal paste, we use MX4. For temporary build, the small amount is enough. Insert the pump wire to this socket, or if you use the cooler, you can place it exactly in the same way. We use the Corsair Vanguard RGB Pro, two planks by 16 GB. You can use also only one of them if you would like to. Use second and fourth slot to fit it. It is possible that your ROM is not suitable with your motherboard. Type in the Google model of your motherboard, then add ROM compatibility. Check if they are suitable for together use. And connect it to power supply unit. First 24 pin till you hear the click. and 8 pin for processor. For the test you can use only 8 pin power. My power supply unit don't have 4 pins, so I have used Molex 2 for pin converter. Make sure your power unit is off.
when everything connected, turn on to the main power. Plug in cooler from radiator. and the power button into the third and fourth upper pin and reset straight under. Just double check this power cable to third and fourth top pin and the reset to third and fourth lower pin. Now all ready to turn it on. RGB lights start flashing and the pop start working. And the cooler start to spin. So now we're definitely sure that the motherboard is working. If it still doesn't work, it's time to think about your power supply unit. So I will show you how to check it. First what you need to do is just plug out from the wall. Make sure here is also turned off. All you need is a simple cooler and switch it straight to the power supply unit. Now find 24 pin connector for motherboard. He have only one green wire. You can see it here, it's one, two, three, four. You can use any simple paper clip or in my situation, I just use the hair clip. Plug one side of the clip to the green wire and the second side to the black wire. It could be seven. All of them black wires is the ground. That's how it should look. Then put it aside and try not to touch it. Plug it into the wall and start your power supply unit. Both of the coolers start to spin. So that means your power supply unit is in good working order. If not, then it might be the time to think about the new power supply unit. Next what could be an issue is the battery on the motherboard. Locate your battery on your motherboard. In my situation the battery could be somewhere here. 
and I will unscrew all the bolts and show you where it's located on the My Motherboard. We finally done and you can see the battery now. There is a flat battery with number 2032. I wouldn't change my battery now as I know it's working, but you may be needed. Then we will go to bias reset jumper. Check your motherboard if you have the bias reset jumper. If you found your BIOS reset jumper, then it should be connected to the first and second pin. If you found the pin but couldn't find the jumper, then possibly you lose it somewhere. For example, if you just clean it from the dust, wherever it was the vacuum or the wipes, you can easily lose it. Check surrounding area or the bin or the vacuum container. This is how the pin should look like. My motherboard doesn't have bias reset jumper, so that's why I used the photo to show you. If still nothing happened and your computer still doesn't power on, Unplug everything from your motherboard, except processor, processor coolant, and your RAM memory. I even leave only one memory stick. Now we will connect power supply unit. Now 24 pin. Then we connect a pin for processor. In many modern motherboards, could be 8 plus 4 pin on the processor. Not long time ago, I had motherboard Asus ROG Strix Z490. After I connected to PCU, RGB lights was working but motherboard won't power on. I was try all the possible issues, but it still won't work. I accidentally turned off 4 pin connector and she started to work. Only with 8 pin connector. I took one part for 8 pin connector and plugged it to 4 pin. That was the problem why it doesn't turn on. After this, if power supply unit doesn't have 4 pin connector, I always use Molex 2 4 pin converter. You can see it on the video now, it's yellow and black. If you don't have Molex, 2 for a pin converter. For the test you can use only 8 pin connector. And everything should be fine. 
but still try to buy for a pin connector as soon as possible. Everything is ready and we left only with the cooler for processor. Switch power supply to the wall. Press the button on the power supply unit. We don't need any other pins or connectors. Just use the screwdriver. And switch third and fourth pin on the front panel socket. If you're not sure, just stop the video and zoom it. Happy days, it's have to start. If not, return it to the shop you bought it from. There is no point to go further, because you can lose your warranty. Just better return it to the shop. In this video, I explain you all the main problems which could be, and I hope it really become helpful for you. Enjoy!